Our solar system is so big, it is almost impossible to imagine its size if you use ordinary units like kilometers or miles. In today's video you have to imagine that there would be a highway from Earth to every planet in the solar system including the Sun and our Moon to answer the question. How long would it take to drive to every planet in the solar system? By the way, a highway to any planet out there would be impossible, but let's just imagine that it would be possible. You don't want to miss other videos about our endless universe? Then like this video and follow this account for more. However, let's start with our wonderful moon. If you are like many people, you've dreamed of one day traveling into space. If it weren't so dangerous, requiring a spacesuit and traveling in a rocket igniting thousands of tons of fuel at any given moment, just about everyone would like to see what it's like to be in space. So, what if you could drive there? Well, that got us thinking. If you could drive to the moon, which would be a relatively safe way of getting there assuming you could drive on a highway with no other vehicles around you, how long would you have to travel in a car? Let's start with how long it takes to get to the moon in a rocket. In the 1960s and 70 seconds, when NASA was running the Apollo program, astronauts traveled to the moon and back within about a week or a little less. That means it only took a few days to make it to Earth's natural satellite. Of course, speed is key here, and without an atmosphere, rockets can get moving pretty quick. But, let's assume this highway of yours is enclosed, with its own atmosphere so that your car and you can benefit from the air you need to breathe. That means you wouldn't get the speed benefits of zero atmosphere. If you travel at typical highway speed, let's say about 100 kilometers per hour, you could get to the moon in under six months. Of course, you're the only one on this highway, so maybe you want to increase your speed a bit and have some fun at 160 kilometers per hour. At that speed, you could get there in just over three months. And if you want to keep things terrestrial, you could drive around the world in far less time. In fact, it would only take 21 days to drive around the world at a speed of 80 kilometers per hour. The only caveat is that you would have to drive non-stop and wouldn't be able to enjoy the places. Our sun. The sun is on average around 150 million kilometers away from Earth. We have to say average because remember that the Earth revolves around the sun and the path it takes around the sun is not an exact circle. So, sometimes the Earth is closer than 150 million kilometers and sometimes it is farther away. It would take 1,430,769 hours to drive there at around 100 kilometers per hour or 59,615 days or 163 years to drive to the sun. Let's move on to the closest planet to the sun. Mercury. At its closest point, Mercury gets to within 77.3 million kilometers away from the Earth. For starters, let's look at how long light itself takes to make the journey. Light takes only 4.3 minutes to travel from the Earth to Mercury when they're at their closest point. And the fastest spacecraft ever launched from Earth is NASA's New Horizons mission, currently on its way to visit Pluto and the outer solar system. New Horizons is traveling at about 80,000 kilometers per hour and it would take about 40 days to get from the Earth to Mercury when they're closest. But how long would it take to drive to Mercury with a car? It would take 770,000 hours, or 32,083 days, or 4,583 weeks, or 88 years, traveling at 100 kilometers per hour. Venus. If you wish to move past that distance and head to Venus, plan on bringing a few books because Venus is about 100 times farther than the distance from the Moon to the Earth. And depending on the actual date, the distance between Earth and Venus increases, so you will have to time your trip to well in advance. At its furthest, the distance from Earth to Venus can be about 257 million kilometers. If your car constantly drove about 100 kilometers per hour, it would take 50 years to drive to Venus. Mars. On average, Mars is 225 million kilometers away. At its very closest, Mars has been 56 million kilometers away. So in fact, if you could walk from Earth to Mars at a brisk rate, about 8 kilometers per hour, it would take about 4,000 years to reach the red planet. If your car constantly drove 112 kilometers per hour, it would take 228 years. And if we fly with a 747 airplane, it would still take 32 years. Jupiter. Since the Earth and Jupiter are both revolving around the Sun, the distance between them is always changing. The average distance between the Earth and Jupiter is 777 million kilometers. If you could travel at the speed of light, it would only take you 43 minutes to get to Jupiter. Since people can't travel at the speed of light, 
you would probably have to take a rocket ship to Jupiter instead which would take you about 2.2 years if it was going at top speed the whole way. But if your car constantly drove with a speed of around 100 km per hour, it would take you almost 850 years to drive to Jupiter. Saturn Voyager 1, the fastest and farthest spacecraft from Earth, reached Saturn in 1980 after a journey of more than nine years. Cassini, a spacecraft launched in 1997, took almost seven years to reach Saturn. So depending on the technology used, it would probably take about seven years to get there with a spacecraft. The average distance from Earth to the Lord of Rings is about 1.2 billion kilometers. Assuming a speed of 100 kilometers per hour by a car and an endless supply of gasoline and car lifespan, well, get there in about 1,855 years. Uranus. For example, the Voyager 2 spacecraft was launched on August 20, 1977, and it reached Uranus on January 24, 1986. So, Voyager 2 took almost nine and a half years to reach Uranus. At its closest, Uranus is 2.5 billion kilometers away from Earth, but at its furthest it is around 3.1 billion kilometers away. If your car constantly drove around 100 kilometers per hour, it would take 2,931 years to drive to Uranus. Neptune when Neptune and Earth line up on the same side of the Sun, at their closest, they are only 4.3 billion kilometers apart. But when the planets are on opposite sides of the Sun, they can put as many as 4.7 billion kilometers between them. Better take some sandwiches with you on that trip. If your car constantly drove 100 kilometers per hour, it would take around 5,137 years. And last but not least, I have a little bonus for you. The tiny dwarf planet Pluto. The average distance from Earth to Pluto is 4.9 billion kilometers. So if your car constantly drove around 100 kilometers per hour, it would take about 6,300 years to drive to Pluto. Which planet would you like to visit and explore if you could? Write it in the comments. And I hope I see you all in the next video.